Thank you for watching NMH at One, which brings you the latest news in Namibia, Africa and the world all through the lunch hour, highlighting current affairs, economic news, sports and international headlines. Now here are today's headlines. Mines and Energy Minister Tom Alwindo talks about the price of fuel and the recent decrease. Youth Ministry launches Youth Connect Namibia to alleviate challenges faced by young people. NAMRA visits Okakarara as part of its outreach efforts. Nigerian students abandoned as teachers strike drags on. I am Aina Koyo. And I am Diana Master and we'll be keeping you company for the next hour. Members of the Namibian Traffic Police received a training in directing traffic this morning. On Lucas enjoyed the training session. Each member received feedback in what they do well and where they needed to improve. This training is vital for police members to take control of traffic situations where they are needed. Now remember to engage with these stories on social media as we share some community news stories from across the country on the other side of this short break in our visual news segment. Business 7, you get news on current economic, financial and business matters in Namibia. The weekly show features interviews with experts and in-depth analysis of burning issues in a way that caters for ordinary Namibians and business connoisseurs alike. For news-related or advertising queries, please contact b7 at synergy.com.na. In our visual news this afternoon, motorists are breathing a sigh of relief with petrol prices that decreased on Tuesday at midnight. Minister of Mines Tom Aluendo talks about the price of fuel. Well, let's have a look. The, the price of the oil itself and also the exchange rate. Now, in both scenarios, the price of um, fuel itself has um, somehow decreased. For example, in, in the last month, the price for, for petrol was uh, 128 US dollar per barrel. Our review this month uh, suggests that the price is now 111 dollars. So that's as far as a, a, a decrease. Uh, equally for, for, for diesel, uh, the last review, the price was at 140 and now it stands at $135. Again, there's an increase. Oh, sorry, it's a decrease. Mm -hmm. Equally also on the, on the foreign exchange, that actually uh, influences the price if the uh, exchange rate depreciates. Moving right along, the Ministry of Sport, Youth and National Service in partnership with the United Nations Development Programme and United Nations Population Fund are planning to launch the Youth Connect Namibia chapter in October 2022. The Youth Connect is a programme that aims to provide a holistic solution to alleviate the challenges faced by African youth by widening the pool of economic, social and civic leadership opportunities through national Youth Connect initiatives. Let's have a look. The Youth Connect is a platform. It's a pan-African platform. So that is what is different for, the, for us here in Namibia. We have our youth policy, which has just come out. It's very comprehensive with its various pillars. It's trying to bring all of that together. So the idea is not to come up with another set of interventions as Manu and the minister have already uh, referred to that. The idea of the Youth Connect is that it is a platform. It allows Namibian youth an opportunity to engage with other youth across the region. And that is where the success stories are coming out from, where say youth in Uganda, Kenya, are connecting with the youth in Ghana 
right and coming up with products innovations solutions to their everyday problems that is the value added of the youth connect um, program so we design our own how we do it how we offer our youth that platform right to engage with other youth the role of the un agencies as as and i dare say also of the ministry is more as a facilitator and coordinators the actual work has to be carried out has to be led by the youth themselves and this to this i can i i pick up on that whole issue about raising that awareness of making the youth aware of these kind of platforms and opportunities where they have something to showcase where they have something to create where they can connect with the youth across the continent so that is what is different and so this is where we are, we are we have a number of programs here and you all are here today in fact to sort of give us also some feedback on how things are working how things are not working and as somebody mentioned how can we do things more <coughs> efficiently how can we connect the dots how can we do things differently right and how do we best activate the youth inclusivity i'm glad my friend you raised that issue because youth inclusivity is the key we are not here to sit and decide for the youth what they want or what they should have we need to now bring them to the forefront and that is the idea that is the idea why you are all here and we would really like to hear from you we haven't come here as i said with ready made ideas or solutions we have a policy framework tell us what is missing in that framework Namibian Revenue Agency spokesperson Tonate Nishizudu explains why tax collectors is conducting a visit in Okakarara as part of its outreach efforts. Let's have a look. The Okakarara Trade Fair presents a great opportunity for us as the Namibia Revenue Agency. We are participating uh, in this uh, trade fair to carry out uh, taxpayers' education and also traders' education. Uh, also to promote our mission and vision uh, because uh, we are a new institution, we need to be known. Uh, but one of the services uh, that we are promoting there is the ITAS. The integrated tax administration system we are registering taxpayers online uh, because we want to make sure that uh, uh, all our taxpayers are registered on ITES. Now today's Namibian Sun newspaper zooms in on the discussion around the red line while Republican reports that NATO fishing enterprises have denied all human trafficking allegations. These and more stories coming up in the newspaper review segment after the break. Thank you for staying with Animated One. We now take a look at what the lead stories are in Namibia's daily newspapers. Starting off, the Namibian Sun newspaper highlights that the existence of the veterinary cordon fence, also known as the Red Line, is limiting Meatco from achieving its full potential. This according to CEO Mwilima Musho Kambanji, who said the VCF's removal could positively impact its business. He made the comments during an interview on the agenda, adding that if the country was opened up to allow access to cattle in the northern communal area, Namibia would never struggle with volumes. Meatco utilizes cattle from the south of VC VCF for exports to high-value markets in South Africa, Botswana, the United States, China and the European Union, while beef north of the red line is earmarked for markets in Angola and Ghana, which are not perceived to be of equal financial stature as those exported from south of the red line. 
The Namibian Sun's page three reports that cannabis valued at close to two million Namibian dollars was seized last month as part of drug-related seizures. According to a drug seizure and arrest report issued for the month of August, various drugs were worth a total of more than a two million Namibian dollars were confiscated, while 148 suspects were arrested in connection with drug-related matters. Of these suspects, 136 were Namibians, six Angolans, a Congolese, a Tanzanian and a Botswana national, as well as one Nigerian, one South African and one Zambian. Now, in our next story, board members of Neta Fishing Enterprise, the company suspected of human trafficking and violation related to marine resources, labor and immigration, said they are not involved in any human trafficking and had not even been charged with any activity relating to human trafficking. Last week, Namibian authorities claimed to have rescued at least 48 suspected human trafficking victims from two Namibian being registered vessels. According to the police, charges being considered against the company directors include trafficking in person, contravening of labor immigration control and the Marine Resources Act and possible fraud. Two nurses testified yesterday in a trial of a man from Aramsley who allegedly set his girlfriend and 13-month-old 13 13 baby on fire in December 2020. One of the nurses treated the girl's bends and testified that it was not the accused Manfred Lynx who brought her to the hospital but a family member. According to her, a baby was brought in the, in the morning after the incident on the 2nd of January 2022. The incident happened on January the 1st at around 10 p.m. The family members apparently told the nurse that the child's father poured gasoline over her and the mother and set them on fire. Now looking at page one of the Algamana Taitung, it reports that the Namibian cattle farmers shareholding in the new slaughter and meat processing plant far exceeds the hopes of the originators. Meanwhile, Meat Co. appears to be relying on the undiminished support of all meat producers and growth from exports above the veterinary line. The paper's page three looks at the annual council meeting which shed light on shortcomings of traditional authorities. The incessant fighting, succession disputes and outdated traditional fines were brought to light after the recently held 23rd annual meeting of the Council of Traditional Leaders in Inanna on Monday. Now let's go for a quick advertisement break and we will be back with news from the Namibian newspaper. Sport Wrap is a daily show focusing on all sport news and current affairs. If you would like to feature your brand or campaign on this platform, contact sportwrap at synergy.com.ma. Let's continue with our newspaper review. The Namibia newspaper leads with words by the Minister of Home Affairs, Immigration, Safety and Security, Albert Kawana, who says that it is time to give young people a chance to lead Swapo. Kawana yesterday announced his retirement from active politics in two years' time and is among four leaders who informed Swapo's Politburo they will not be available for position at the party's November Congress. They Others include the Speaker of the National Assembly Peter Kachavivi, Agriculture Minister Karl Schleitven, and Minister of Gender and Equality, Poverty, Eradiction, and Social Welfare Doreen Sioka. The papers, page three, zooms in on a political analyst who are tearing into the ability of Prime Minister Sarah Wongera Amadila and her deputy Netumbo Nandindraita to effect a paradigm shift that will change the country's financial fortunes and combat corruption when President Hage Gengob leaves the office. Political analyst Rui Chitende has raised concerns that neither candidate has any policy vision to garner strong support from the electorate. Now moving over to the new era newspaper, Mariental Local Authority Councillor from the Independent Patriots for Change Party has been arrested for possession of cannabis. 
Oriental Municipality Councillor Shekutamba Michael Jonas is due to appear in court today following his arrest. He was arrested after drugs valued at $231,000 Namibian dollars were seized at the Mariental Liquor Store on Thursday. Jonas is now the second councillor to be arrested in less than a year after Kalkrand Village Councillor Simeon Martin, who was nabbed for stock theft in November last year. New Aerospace 3 takes us to Valvis Bay, where the Municipal Council is looking for a competent, incorruptible CEO. The council recently re-advertised the position which has left vacant last year after the municipality opted not to renew the contract of Moronga Haingura. Namibia's import bill during uh, July 2022 was mainly driven by petroleum oils and copper ores and uh, concentrates uh, valued at 2.1 billion Namibian dollars and 4.1 rather 0.4 billion Namibian dollars respectively. According to the Namibia Statistic Agency Trade Bulletin, the value of imports stood at 11.6 billion Namibian dollars, a 4.5 percent increase when compared to an 11.1% increase registered in the preceding month. Now after the break, we zoom in on the South African Revenue Service, which is investigating luxury goods purchases to identify individuals it suspects are hiding sources of income from the authorities. More on this with Aina after the break. Flex is your health and fitness show that focuses on the health of the mind, body and spirit. If you would like to feature your brand or campaign on this platform, contact zone at synergy.com.na. In our economic news this afternoon, the South African Revenue Service is investigating luxury goods purchase as part of a clap down as it, on individual it suspects are deliberately hiding sources of income from the authorities. We are starting to look at who is buying luxury apparel and we are trying to find out where these people get their money. Chief Revenue Officer John Stone Makubu questioned on Monday at a conference hosted by the South African Institute of Taxation. The probe is part of South Africa's Revenue Service effort to bolster tax compliance and build capacity under Edward Kieswitter, who was appointed as commissioner in 2019. The tax body was among institutions that were systematically hollowed out by the president, the, by the former president Jacob Zuma's nine-year rule to protect him and his allies from scrutiny with a commission finding agency suffered a massive failure of governance and integrity under the former head Tom Moyane. The tax office last year created a wealth unit to focus on high net, um, high net worth individual taxpayers with complex financial agreements. It also completed 25 lifestyle audits during a fiscal year through March which flagged about 474 million rand of assessments that it's now working to collect. In our next story, Namibia, a country with great scope of bilateral trading opportunities in minerals, mines, agriculture, pharmaceuticals and industrial development has attracted the keen interest of some Indian companies. This was said at the Indian Namibia Conference 2022 that was organized by the Indian Economic Trade Organization in association with the Indian Africa Trade Council. The conference was recently attended by Namibia's business community. Community. India's exports to Namibia amount to 206 million US dollars for mainly petroleum products. When it comes to imports, India has become Namibia's second largest partner after South Africa. Asif Iqbal, the president of the Indian Economic Trade Organization, said the Leto delegation last week participated in Namibia's Mining Expo 2022, which saw many companies from around the world taking part.
Rashad Kamaldeep Jill, the Commissioner of Agriculture of the Indian Africa Trade Council, spoke about India's efforts in strengthening relations against the background of India celebrating 75 years of independence. Now, Jill assured African nations of India's cooperation and encouraged them to make the services of agricultural expertise available for furthering the bilateral economic and trade relations between Africa and India. Now let's have a look at our economic indicators. The Namibian dollar's value has dropped against most of these major currencies while it remains at 19 Namibian dollars and 32 cents against the British pound. Namibia Asset Management LTD stocks are down in price by 2.9% on the NSX. Local index closed 0.02% lower while overall index has increased. This while most stock prices remain unchanged on the NSX. Most of these major commodities have dropped in price with the exception of copper which has increased by 0.39%. Nigeria's Federal University have been empty for more than six months. This story after the break. The My.NA Cars Show provides viewers with the best in class cars content, engaging interviews, as well as a showcase of the latest cars related news, products, and services. If you would like to feature your brand or campaign on this platform, contact my.na at synergy.com.na. My.na cars, more than just a ride. Thank you for watching NMH at 1. We now return with the news from Africa. Nigeria's Federal University have been empty for more than six months with the students prevented from attending classes due to the protracted standoff between the state and teachers who declared an indefinite strike in late August. The main staff union of the Federal University of Nigeria initially called the strike on the 14th of February, demanding more funds for higher education which has been neglected for decades. After several extensions to give the government time to meet their demands, including their payment of salary, the leadership of the union declared an indefinite strike with the Federal Public University of Africa's most populous country on the 30th of August. In a statement, the ASU leadership said the strike was aimed at saving the public universities from collapse. The demands as in the previous strike are for higher salaries, funding and improved facilities. The union is urging students and parents to support the teachers in their struggle for better conditions. But after a series of strikes, students feel sacrificed. In 2020, following the COVID-19 pandemic, Nigerian university teachers went on strike for nine months, the longest in the country's history. In our next story, Togo's parliament on Tuesday extended for six months the state of emergency in the Savannah region in the far north of the country, which has been plagued by incursion by jihadist groups. While jihadist groups operating in the Sahel appear to be gradually moving towards the West African coast, northern Togo has northern Togo rather has suffered at least five attacks since November 2021. Declared in June by the Togolese president the state of emergency was unanimously extended until March 2023 by the National Assembly meeting in Kara, about 400 kilometers north of Lome. The country's constitution requires parliamentary approval to extend the state of emergency beyond three months. Faced with attacks on our peaceful people, our objective is to give the defense and security forces the necessary means to stop the threat 
said National Assembly Speaker Yawa Tsegan. According to Security Minister Daha Meyaka, the state of emergency creates the condition for admi administrative and operational measures necessary for the proper conduct of military operations and a return to peace in the region. In our next story, Police in Nigeria's River State rescued 15 children who were abducted in order to be trafficked, police said in a statement on Tuesday. The children ranging from 4 years to 15 years old are found with a 44-year-old woman claiming to be a nana in the southern state of Nigeria's Delta region. Police arrested woman Maureen Wekuchunu and said they were working to reunite the children with their parents. Investigation is ongoing with the view of arresting other suspects linked to the case. Eboka Friday, River State Commissioner of the Police said in a statement, one rescued nine-year-old boy had been taken from a market in October 2020 in neighboring Baesa State and had already been sold to a woman in Lagos who returned to Wekchunu, police said. Human trafficking is common in Nigeria, according to U.S. State Department, a non-profit organization, Pathfinder Justice Initiative, with children kidnapped or coerced into domestic labor, sex work or other forced labor. On our international news after the break, as we highlight the China dealing with a devastating earthquake and its effect. More on that with Diana. Stay with us. Thank you for staying with Animation One. Let's get into our international news. China has reopened roads leading to the epicenter of Monday's 6.8 magnitude earthquake in the southwestern province of Sichuan, and traffic has resumed, state media reported on Wednesday, while the death toll has risen to 74. In addition, a total of 259 people were injured in the disaster, and 26 remained missing as of Tuesday night, the People's Daily reported. The strongest earthquake to hit the province since 2017 destroyed numerous buildings and caused severe damage to power and water infrastructure as well as telecommunications. Rescuers had rushed to reach stranded people, restore utilities and send emergency relief while 11,000 people were evacuated on Tuesday from Luding County where the quake was centered. Early on Wednesday, China Earthquake Network Center recorded a magnitude 3 aftershock at the epicenter at a depth of 12 kilometers. Weather forecasters have also warned of the prospect of heavy rains in the region until Friday. Now in our next story, at least 14 people have died and others injured after a huge fire at a karaoke complex in southern Vietnam near the capital Ho Chi Minh. The fire broke out on the upper floor of the establishment on Tuesday night, trapping several customers in rooms at the time. To escape, four people jumped from the second and third floors, local media said. They were injured but survived. Firefighters reached the scene shortly after alarms went off. Crews say the blaze took just under an hour to bring under control. Investigators are still determining the cause. The Anpu karaoke bar located in the Bing Dong region, just north of the city, occupied a significantly sized building with 29 rooms. About a third of the building had been on fire, local officials said. It had several decorations and wooden decor, BBC Vietnam reported. This is not the first time a fire has broken out, has broken out at a karaoke bar in Vietnam. Last month, three firefighters died after trying to extinguish a fire at a karaoke venue in the capital, Hanoi. That's it for our international news. After the break, we get into our local sports news. Stay with us. Careers Bistro focuses on the movers and shakers in the corporate world. If you would like to feature your brand or campaign on this platform, contact zone at synergy.com.na.
Starting off our local sports news on Friday, the Brave Gladiators of Namibia clash with South Africa in the Kosafa Women's Semi-Final Clash. The Gladiators have six previous appearances at the Kosafa Cup, first in 2006, 2008, 2017, 2018, 2019 and 2021, but never progressed to the semis or won the competition. In our next story, lack of financial support might hamper plans to take the Paralympic team to the upcoming Marrakesh Grand Prix in Morocco. The Grand Prix is the sixth international para-athletics meeting for the year and will be held from the 15th to the 17th of September. Next up, after suffering an opening match defeat against Uganda, Namibia bounced back with back-to-back -back victories against Botswana and Sierra Leone to book their place in the semi-final of the ICC Under-19 Women's T20 World Cup Africa Qualifier, which will be on Saturday in Gaborón. That's it for local sports news. International sports news follows after the break. The Noorderlig publication focuses on the central northern regions of Namibia, highlighting the activities that have an impact on locals as well as the role players in economic and social upliftment. The Noorderlig is inserted in the Republican and distributed countrywide. The Noorderlig provides the ideal opportunity to communicate with our readers on what your business has to offer not just for locals, but for tourists and locals visiting the central northern area of Namibia. Providing a wonderful opportunity and platform to enhance your brand, contact republicane at synergy.com.na. Kaapvol Whip vertel stories van die Kaap en sy mense en uit die stories en ervarings deel ons mooi en unieke plekke om te sien en te ervaar. Kaapvol Whip gaan waar die kapenaars gaan en gaan keier waar die kapenaars keier. Van die strande tot die wijnlande en die sportvelde tot die restaurante. Ons keier dalk sommer ook in iemandse kombuis vir hy familie reset van oma. Ons eer die kaapse traditionele kosse en drink van sy beste wijne. Kaapvol Whip gesels met die gewone kapenaar en soms ook met die meer bekendes. Maar week vir week vertel ons elkeen sy eie unieke story op sy unieke manier. Kaapvol Whip kyk ook uit vir die Namibiers in die Kaap. Sommige kom keier net en sommige maak die Kaap hulle nieuwe thuiste. Namibiers in die Kaap gesel saam met Kaapvol Whip en deel self die mooi, die uniek en lekker wat op op pad kom. In alles is Kaapvol Whip een program wat die mooi en die lach na vore wil bring en een program waar ons mekaar kan opbouw en leer. Daar is WIP. Daar is een kaap vol WIP. We start off our international sports news with tennis. Nick Kyrgios said winning is the only thing that matters at a Grand Slam and that he was devastated by his five-set loss to Karen Kashinov in the US Open quarterfinals on Tuesday. The Australian went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Kashinov but did not do enough to counter the Russian's punishing serve as he fell and ended his bid for a maiden Grand Slam title. Now Tottenham Hotspur have been penalised with a hectic schedule compared to other teams and must speak to the Premier League to ease their burden and avoid often playing three times in a week, Ma manager Antonio Conti said. Spurs have just played three Premier League games in seven days against Nottingham Forest, West Ham United and Fulham and face three more matches in a week. In our last story, South Africa's top order batters have, have to step up and get some big scores if they are to stand a chance of winning the three-test series away against England, emerging batsman Keegan Peterson said on Tuesday. The two countries are level at 1-1 after the opening two tests, both of which were won by an innings and concluded inside three days. They meet at the Oval from Thursday in the final test of the series. That's it for our sports news. After the break, we, get, we take a look at the highlights from today's broadcast, just in case you missed them. In the Yoronga region. For news-related or advertising queries, contact irongatalk at synergy.com.na. Iranga Talk, our community, your news.
here are some of our highlights just in case you've missed them and thank you very much for watching our show this afternoon. Nigeria's federal universities have been empty for more than six months with students prevented from attending classes due to the protracted standoff between the state and teachers who declared an indefinite strike in late August. China has reopened roads to the epicenter of Monday's 6.8 magnitude earthquake in the southwestern province of Sichuan and traffic has resumed while the death toll has risen to 74. On Friday, the brave gladiators of Namibia will clash with South Africa in the Kosafa women's semi-final clash. The gladiators have six previous appearances at the Kosafa Cup. Those have been your highlights. Thank you for staying with Animated One and spending your lunch hour with me, Diana Master, as well as with Anna Queo. Remember to tune in every weekday at 1 p.m. as we take you through the latest happenings in Namibia and beyond. That is it from us in studio, but don't go anywhere because up next is news from Namibia's Irongo region. Have a splendid day. Got me feeling fresh. For news related or advertising queries, contact Irongo Talk at synergy.com.na. Irongo Talk, our community, your news. Hallo allemaal en welkom bij nog een episode van Irongo Talk. Mijn naam is Leandria Mouwers en vandaag keer ons samen met jullie hier van ons Swakopmund kantoren bij Plaats Ameer. Zoals gewoonlijk brengen ons weer die nieuws, die weer getuigen als ook Grampi zijn vastvangverslag. En ons onderhoud segment gesels ons met Martin Joseph, wat is wie die waarnemende onderwijsinspecteur is vir Walvisbaai. En hy vertel ons so'n bykie meer oor die huidige situasie van ons graad 8 en graad 1 leerders hier in Walvisbaai. So bly asjeblief ingeskakel, ons is nou nou weer terug. En nou vir ons nies, raadsleren van NATO Fishing Enterprises het beweerings ontken van min mense mishandel of verwande oortrerings dier die maatskapie rakende die wette op marine hulpbronne, arbeid of immigratie. De Mabiese overheer het laatst week beweer dat het minstens 48 vermeende mensehandel slagoffers van twee in Mabiese geregistreerde vaartuie gered. Die politie sê aanklachte wat tien die maatskapie directeren oorweeg word, is onder meer mensehandel oortreding van die arbeidswet, wet op immigratiebeheer en marine hulpbronne as ook moendelike bedrog. Volgens die politie woordvoerder, adjunct commissaris Kauna Shikwambi, kan die saak tot juni teruggespoor word, toen een Mubian Fisheries Observers met steen van die politie die een Mubiese geregistreerde vissersvaartuie betrap het waar hulle na bewering die wet op visserije en marine hulpbronne oortree het. Een onderzoek wat steeds in die gang, het, het, aan die gang is, het onthul dat hier die mense lang uur is onder rust gewerk het. Hulle is selfs gedwong om te werk terwijl hulle siek was. Daar was geen medische beamtes aan boord nie en nie genoeg conversie nie, sê Shikwambi. Dit het geleid tot een onderzoek na vermeende mensehandelslagoffers aan boord van die vaartuie MV Shangfu en Nata Tue 
beide in besit van Nata Fishing Enterprises. Die, beman die bemaning is gered en die twee voertuie is as instrumente van vermoedelike misdaad geskit. Nou, een lid van die maatschappij wat anoniem wil bly weens die ergens van die aantuiging sê dan in hem uitgesê. Ons is eers op 1 september ambtelijk bewus gemaakt van die onderzoek en die achterdag oor sekere wette wat dalk dier ons vaartuie oor tree is. Ons beklem toen graag dat ons bereidwillig was om enige overhede by te staan in die huidige onderzoek. Ons vertrouw die onderzoekprocedure sal sy loop neem en met die tijd ons onskuld bewys. Oor beweringe van bemaningslening wat lede wat sê dat 2018 op die vaartuig vaart vastgekeer is, het die bron gesê daar is lede wat in 2018 begin werk en hulle contracte voltooi, huis toegegaan en na lang tyd weer teruggekom het omdat hulle het geniet om op die vaartuig te werk. Een bemanningslid het volgehou, het een beter levensgehalte op ons vaartuig as by sy huis en het ook die inkomste nodig. Hy wou nie terugkeer huis toe tydens die pandemie nie en het soos ander bemanningslede sy verblijf op ons vaartuig verleng. Amal het die vryheid om te besluit wat hulle wil doen, het die bron verduidelik. Die mishandeling van ons bemanning is streng verbode. Ons verseker dat hulle al die toerusting voeding en leeftoestande het waar hulle nodig het om gezond te wees en om op hulle beste te presteer. Ons vaartuie voldoen aan HICCP, wat beteken ons het inspecties geslag, wat certificeer dat ons levensomstandighede en die verwerkingsgebiede aan die Europese Unie sy veiligheidsstandaarde voldoen het hy gesê. Al ons bemanning ondergaan ook medische onderzoeke voor dat hulle vaartuie uitvaar om te verseker dat hulle gezond genoeg is om hulle plichte te verrig. Maar as jy graag meer wil lees, kan jy gaan na ons webwerk, dit is www.irongo.com.na waar hy die bron alle aantuigings verduidelik. In tweedens, die Walvis Baai Municipale Raad het een plan goedgekeer om onwettige structure, bedrijfighede en grondgebruik te verweide van grond wat dier Municipale Raad besit word en grond wat bestrate en openbare oopruimte doeleindes gereserveer is. Nou volgens raadlid Richard Haup, die voorzitter van die bestuurskomitee, het een kennisgeving in alle onwettige bewoners en bedrijfighede binnen Walvis Baai tot 30 maart 2022 gegeen om alle onwettige activiteite te staak en enige onwettige statuur op municipale eindom recht dier die dorp te ontruim en of te verweider. Nou hierdie het gemengde meningsgegenereer van die publiek dier sociale media. Nou hierdie kennisgeving is vir twee op een volgende weke in februari 2022 in een plaaske korant gepubliseer en aangezien die oortreer is ambtelijk gewaarskees, is het nou tyd om hulle individueel in kennis te stel in oorstemming met die statutaire bepalings. Nou die plan was dus dan goedgekeer is as volg. Die municipaliteit beoog om vaam dat die 7 en ander geïdentificeerde hertoewysingsgebiede voor te berei. Nou interne consultatie sal gevolg word dier openbare consultatie met oortreer open met oortredes en sluitende duigene wat onwettige water aan die oortredes verskaf om hulle in te lig oor die intredings, kennisgevings en ander opties wat in hulle beskikbaar is om hulle aktiviteite en structure jelders te wettig. Nou kennisgevings sal aan oortredes uitgereik word om aktiviteite te staak en die structure binnen 28 dag te verweide. Dit sal gevolg word die onkoppeling van waterdienste wat gelever word by die eiendomme waar eienaars onwettig water verskaf aan getuigde tekende onwettige grondgebruike en sylke aktiviteite. En dit sal binnen 28 daar ook uitgereik word. Soedra hy die 28 daar voorbij is, sal die hoogerechtshof geberaadslag word om hofbeveel uit te ken en dan het sal gevolg word dier die verweidering van hierdie structure. Maar gaan geloer gerust daar op ons webverf, dit is www.irongo.com.na of te sien of jy dak hierdie wets oortredings oortree. En dan ten laaste, die omgevings en beleggingsfonds van Namibia het drie osmoses eenhede, dit is mini ontsluiting, ontsluit, ontsluit, aanlichte oorhandig wat by die drie daurees gemeenskapswaterpunte geïnstalleer moet word, namelijk Farm Vrede, Goeie Gelukpost en Santa Mapost. Hierdie technologies gevorderde faciliteite sal grootliks bijdra tot die verbetering van gemeenskapsbestaan van die gemeenskap op by hierdie drie plaase. Die IEF sy rol is een nationale entiteit wat verantwoordelik is vir die mobilisering 
van fondse en om te de bele in gemeenschapsprojecte soos hierdie en is van kardinale belang om die ernstige behoeftes van gemeenschappen in gelandelijke gebieden aan te spreken. Nou die beleggingsfonds het die loodsproject ten bedrag van 1 miljoen namewiese dollar uit sy eie hulpbronne gefinansier wat daarop gemik is om die water by die drie gemeenschapse waterpunten te versag en dit te geskik te maak vir menselike verbruik en besproeiingsdoeleindes. Neville Andre, die gouverneur van Irongo, het vertrouwen uitgesprek met die dat die nieuwe waters, watersverzachtingsstelsels makkelijke toegang tot water zal verzeker, maar ook dien een doeltreffende en gereelde watervoorzieningsstelsel voor die hele gemeenschap. Maar zoals ik al reeds gezegd heb, gaan loer gerust daar op ons webvers, dus www.irongo.com.na. Stuur ons ook jullie nieuwstips. Dit is nieuwstips at irongo.com.a. So blij so blief ingeskakel vir ons onderhoud, ons is nou nou weer terug. Mr. Martin, um, enrollment is basically completed for grade 1, grade 8. Can you perhaps just tell us what's the current situation um, in terms of our grade 1s and grade 8s here in the Wolfish Bay circuit? Well, um, Wolfish Bay have not changed. Um, the usual trend is still um, persisting. That is um, the point where you have um, more people still seeking for enrollment in those two grades, grade 8 and uh, grade 1. Although our grade 1 enrollment has been completed, um, of course we have managed to enroll 1,070 learners or children for grade 1 for 2023 academic year. But then we have realized that we still have parents who are knocking at our door and the week, um, the second week of August. We were then uh, doing the uh, what we call record keeping just to find out how many children are still out there who are not yet um, enrolled for grade one. So we came out with a figure of 440 children who are still in need of placement. Our schools have reached the caring capacity and our classrooms are overcrowded. Um, we are still looking forward to see what is next and how will we accommodate the full hundred. For grade eight, we this year we were having a lot. We are having a lot of uh, grade seven learners, and the secondary school could only accommodate um, one thousand and twelve of them. Four hundred and forty-four have not yet been allocated to a secondary school. And the secondary schools that have taken up the, 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 the 1,012 have reached beyond uh, mention their carrying capacity. So we are still looking into how are we going to be able to accommodate these 444 years for grade 8 for 2023 academic year. So as I said, Buffalo Bay have not changed. It's still the same. Um, but then uh, the, 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 the 444 grade 7 who could not be placed for grade 8 is the highest record since ever. Uh, so that tells you that we, this is a complete secondary school on its own. And the 440 for grade 1 tells you it's a complete primary school on its own. So we are still hopeful as we have been and we are working tirelessly day and night to see how best we can assist the community. So the, 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 the main um, way we can challenge or um, tackle this challenge is to build a primary school and a secondary school for Definitely. Australia. Definitely. There, there, there's, no, there's no any other hope. 
Now, would you like to call on private sector uh, to maybe get involved to assist the government to build a primary or secondary school? Or, or who would you say would be? There is a common call that then easily one can say uh, that uh, please, if there's anybody out there who really feel he can come in and assist, we, we won't even let bypass mm -hmm. because there is something that we definitely embrace in our all two arms. We need classrooms. And we also need land. It's also another thing we can start with there. Land to construct classrooms and then finance to construct the classrooms so that we can have at least uh, this uh, 888, 84 learners accommodated. It's a complete school. Exactly, sir. Yes. Exactly. Now, um, uh, um, we just um, we had a handover of donation of, of textbooks. Aside from the lack of textbooks at schools, what are the challenges our schools facing here in Wolfish Bay? Challenges are many at schools, just like anywhere else. Um, textbooks are one. Um, exercise books are another. Chairs are another need and challenges desks are also things that we are struggling with and uh, we as, as, as you just rightly mentioned we are calling on every individual every Namibian to see if you can get somewhere grab a chair give it to a certain school grab two desks and drop it at a certain school who will appreciate that so remember education cannot only be you know um, taken care of by the government all of us have to play a role and that, therefore, I'm challenging this time around. Yes. I'm challenging every Namibian out there to come on board and make sure that our Namibian children are educated in a community that is conducive, in a community that is inviting for anybody else to love to attend school in Namibia. Our classrooms are oof, over the top, 40s. Some are close to 50. One class is because of lack of space. So if anybody out there, really, as I said earlier, it's willing and can afford, we, I challenge those people to come on board. Awesome.